and did the Hornets mock Hunter. And he seemed to, uh, well, you know, he's kind of on the same page I am. He really likes Wiseman, though. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, as far as the Hornets go, we, we, we would really love and need some wing scoring. Uh, been, you know, like I said, I've been kind of keeping up and watching the uh, uh, the mock draft right. scene. Is it, if there's a scene for that? That is a scene. <laughs> it is a scene because if it's not the NBA, people that follow NFL mock drafts right. are that's like their focus. They they they've got five different ones here, and the, <laughs> this is if this trade happens, and this is if this trade happens, and this is everything stays the same. Oh, it's ridiculous. In basketball, either usually nothing happens, or or something it's tons major of happens. Trades. It's yeah, like three or four, five, yeah. six in the first round, and then so. you're and then it, it turns out to be like where the Hornets made the trade, and you're wondering. Did you really get what you think you were getting? Talking about the Shea Gilgus trade yeah, for, back for Miles squad. Bridges. I was like, ah, you didn't. Did they even get anything extra for swapping that? I don't think so. So what was the point? Of I think it was, was just player for player. What was the, Jesus Christ. I don't quote me on that, but I, I think it was I player know, for player. Just, if you try to make anything, any sense out of something the Hornets do, it's going to be a, a tough, tough road to, to go on. Um, They, uh, just, you know, talking to Andy and everything, Hunter, uh, you know, we're looking, of course, mm-hmm. this isn't, you know, he's like, well, in Zach kind of, you know, we get a top pick when there's no studs. You know, we missed Dwight Howard by one pick. We missed yeah. Shaq by one pick. And we end up in the two spot, got MKG. So, you know, just because we have this pick don't mean we won't mess it up. But the key... I, I guess it's just you know being third in, in, in this draft without a mm-hmm. without a def, definitive number one. Usually, a lot of times, Hunter, there's a one and a two. Yeah, like the, how there was it was it was back and forth between R.J. Barrett and, and Zion, who right. and Zion eventually proved himself to be the one, and mm-hmm. then after that, it was just okay. Well, R.J. Barrett will go two. And then who's the rookie? Who's the best rookie? Zion. Well, well technically, the best rookie's Ja. Yeah. And Ja went second. I'm sorry, yeah, R.J. Ja went, went third. Second. So, but. That would have never happened if Ja didn't go off that season because everybody thought okay. it was going to be RJ and Zion. So here, I think that hurts if there's no NCAA basketball. Right. Here here here's the Hornets predicament. So last year, you know, Ja probably wouldn't have went second. Right. So one thing that people hadn't really talked about is that without an NCAA tournament, you know, Steph Curry probably would have failed to the Hornets mm-hmm. in that draft if it wasn't for the NCAA tournament. I mean, he went off in the tournament. They couldn't guard him, and he went off in that tournament. And and you know, you got to remember, Steph is at Davidson, so they're definitely we're gonna. They were holding that against him, even though he went right in the turn, even though he went far in the tournament. So, if he doesn't play in that tournament, so what makes me think, Hunter? Are there any small schools uh, like like the Davidsons or somebody that's hiding talent? When you look at these, when you look at this mock draft. Should we be looking somewhere in the five to fifteens to where, man, that guy, he probably should, could have ended up getting drafted higher if he had had a tournament. Probably, to me though, like I keep screaming Obi Toppin because I can. It, it fits with what you just said. Is there a smaller school? He was the player of the year. Though. He was the player of the year. I know, but you don't usually think of Dayton as right. your powerhouse. You know, a lot of there, it wouldn't be considered a big a power five conference. Why did he powerhouse. not end up at Ohio State? That's a big is, question. Is for, that's a question that everybody can ask. Why did how did how come Fred Van Vliet ended up at Wichita State and yeah. now he tears it up for Toronto? You could ask the same thing. Why how did Damian Lillard end up at Weber State and now look at him? Yeah. That's just a big question. Murray State has produced a lot of talent though. Um, Weber State has produced some talent as well. Wichita State's always been that one team that you had to keep your eye out for. VCU, when they had Shaka Smart, was one of the ones that was producing a little bit of talent. Um, But as of right now, small school-wise, I think them not having a tournament did hurt those players that, you know, play at mid-majors and needed that to really— that's why I've said the same thing about why they needed college football to come in. Those yeah. fringe guys that are right on the edge to maybe getting drafted because there's a difference in the NBA. You only got two two rounds so, and then a bunch yeah, of undrafted. The way the NFL is going to work with with the guys missing Hunter is the guys mm-hmm. like what you just said three th- third through seventh rounders, right? Are, are they're almost going to have no clue on some of these kids what to do, especially yeah. if they don't play in the fall. You're right. And in the first and second rounders, they're probably locked in pretty good. And those guys, Hunter, mm-hmm. like Chaz's, right? Like let's say Chaz doesn't go. Doesn't play, and I know they're supposed to be playing in two weeks. We'll say he didn't play, yeah. And then he walks in. 
the combine already at n- in number four, or number five linebacker of the nation. Mm-hmm. You don't think he can? He he'd be a think about Chaz as a workout warrior. This is what I always said about putting him in with the quarterbacks. Once he ever got into the NFL combine, with all the other quarterbacks are the same height and he's got the same arm, but oh crap, this kid can run a four four. Oh crap, mm-hmm. he's two thirty. Oh crap, yeah. yeah. Like I always thought he would blow the scouts away in that sense, but now it's against other linebackers. You know that's something that maybe he should uh, be looking at. But let's stick with basketball. Um, I, I want to go down through some of these names and here and. and would this year be one hundred that you know more about actually the foreign players than you would the small school guys? So you're talking G League players, right? Well, not necessarily that, but like the Lamellos. Oh, 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 and oh! I thought you said farm. Uh, foreign, you said foreign. foreign. I thought you meant like the farm, no, no. farm, uh, For- farm team guys. Foreign, foreign players. I understand. You uh, have more tape on them, so you have Lamelo and and Denny Avdija. Um, yeah, you've got this kid Killian Hayes from France. You got two kids from France listed in the top eleven. So when you're thinking about it, you got two kids from Memphis, Hunter, and two kids from France, and a kid from Israel, right, in the top eleven. Like when you, how does so many people? Let's say you know you'll have one year where where Duke has three kids in the top ten, and then you look at this ten, ten that I have, and there's not a single school basically from, you know, you got North Carolina. Cole Anthony is snuck in the top ten here, but Hunter, the, the main, he's the only ACC person. In the top sixteen, according, which is crazy. According to well, now I I'm an idiot. I said that wrong. Well, you know, I'm not an idiot. I did say that wrong because they don't have the Florida State kids on this one in the top ten, mm-hmm. and they were listed in one of these. Patrick Williams at twenty six in this one, and Vassal at nineteen. This is the consensus draft. Like those guys have been going higher in some of the. I saw somebody pick Williams at eighth in one of the mock drafts. Patrick Williams, the Florida State kids. What what Florida State has really done, and I've noticed this, they've got size. Like their ball players are big, their yeah. wings are big, I think and they can six, slash. Seven. Yeah, they're big. Yeah, that was one of the things that made them so proficient. Not only because they could score, mm-hmm. but the but their size. That's the same thing people talk about in the, on the NBA scale with the Lakers. It's their size makes such a mismatch on the defensive side of the ball. That's one thing Coach Hamilton has really been preaching down there at Florida State for years. That's always been his mantra. It has been defense, 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 and then we can obviously get on the counterattack and score. And Florida State, the, the players that they had this past season, kudos, man, because I, I hate that they didn't have a tournament because I think they would have had a very good shot with those players. Yeah, and especially and especially you Vassal. NBA, you got two lottery picks. Yeah. You should make a run. Especially Vassal. Unless and you're I, coached I, by Krzyzewski. I think, yeah, true. <laughs> unless you're coached by Krzyzewski and then you run into Michigan State. But I seriously think that Vassal could climb up because he's a wing scorer, and we know how valuable that is right now at the NBA level. And if you look at almost every team that's picking 1 through 10, I would bet at least 1 through 10, outside of maybe Golden State, because if they retain Andrew Wiggins, this isn't going to matter to them, but they have a need of wing scoring. Mm -hmm. So I could see all of the wing scorers be an emphasis. The only outlier to me would be Wiseman. But that's because I think they're saying Wiseman fits the new prototypical five. He can kind of spread the floor out, shoot the three ball. He's got a little bit of handles on the inside. He's not quite just the big body that you stick down there in the paint, and that's exactly where he needs to be. So I I don't know. Uh, I think think there's going to be more value around, around wing scoring, especially when these teams watch what other teams do in the playoffs. I think that's, you know, they've watched them go forward mm-hmm. and say, well, who, why, why are they winning? Who's leading that team? Giannis, big wing scorer. LeBron, wing scorer. Uh, Jimmy Butler, good on defense, but also can be a wing scorer. Maybe not the most prolific three-point shooter, but, I mean, if you're a slasher, you can teach him to shoot. Jordan changed the, you know, people will talk about how great Jordan was. He changed the game in the fact that, yeah, we want to look at today's game and say no centers, Hunter. Well, mm-hmm. Jordan killed the centers for the most part. Right. Um, he, until he came in, you had to have a big man mm-hmm. to win the championship. Um, the Pistons were probably the only team that didn't really have a center. They won it the two years before him. So if, you know, Detroit fans will scream hard about that. Lambeer still was four is a fourteen and ten guy. Um, it, it's not. Uh, Jordan was the first one with a center 
weren't really the I guess I guess Isaiah Nimar too weren't really the top three players at all. They were barely even top five player on the Bulls team. Mm. Fifth, fifth. That's probably the first team that said because like like I said, Lambert was getting 14, 15 points a game. So yeah. that's probably the first team the Bulls because people that, that didn't go, feed the ball. I think that's far back as you could go to say it's not the big man would be either Detroit or Chicago because even at the time where. Bird was having his run. They still had their big men in McHale. Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish are both say, Hall of Famers. I was about to say McHale and Parrish. And then even <laughs> looking at the Lakers, for God's sakes, what, what Kareem, 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 arguably one of the greatest Just scorers Magic, of all time. I mean, Magic lost four championships with Kareem or Dulce Bar on his team. Mm-hmm. James Worthy was on his team. I mean, they <laughs> were three, stacked. They were three stacked. Like, I think it was three. But, but the big man played such an important role because Magic was such a good facilitator to him, he could just get them the ball with ease. Well, well, it used to be you want to run the ball, run the run the offense through the post, and then adjust from there. Mm-hmm. And and now it's drive to the post and then kick it out to someone else. Well, you know, I, I wrote <laughs> about that. I wrote, a, I wrote about post. that. I wrote about that in my argumentative paper whenever I was talking why '90s basketball and 2010s basketball like there's not really that big of a difference. It's because the only difference is the fact that. You know, in the 80s and the 90s, it was get the ball into the post and let them work. Mm-hmm. Now it's if you do get the ball on the post, have everybody on the perimeter moving until they're open for the three point shot. There's a dare, and the, the amount of three pointers that they took back then, what was it? Three point shot wasn't even implemented in the NBA till like 78. Yeah, it was, it was 78, 79. Was Michael, well, yeah, because Michael didn't even have the three point line in, in college. college. He didn't in college. He, he first time he saw it was in the NBA. So, the the difference now what you're asking these big men to do today Think about Jordan is completely shoot a three different. Three pointer until he was 21 years old. And didn't still, even shoot a single three pointer. He made, I what he averaged maybe three to four three pointers a game and still averaged 30. Yeah. How Harden shoots 10 more threes than him a game and Jordan still averaged more than him at two pointers. And that's what people don't get is like so he would drive to the basket, mm-hmm. get fouled, still get the shot up because of his hang time. And then get the they get the three. He See, this the, is the why though I play. feel like Wiseman could really fit with the Hornets. Ugh. Is be, and I know people are gonna hate that, Ugh. but the only reason I say this is you could you could have what you should have had for years to come with Kimba and Dwight, and you know how Kimba and Big Al work the pick and roll. If Wiseman can run the pick and roll, he can be dominant in this league because. Sure, he's going to have the floor already spread out because he's the big man that can shoot threes. Mm-hmm. Well, the paint's going to be completely open for him. I think what sucks for the Hornets is they have no idea at this point what the top two people are going to do. Um, so if I if I had the number one pick, if I'm the Hornets, I want mm-hmm. Anthony Edwards. Just from everything I've researched, I'll take the six five guy that can win mill dunk. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it. Um, he's I, a I'm, scorer. I'm tired of watching. You know, this guy may be a school. This guy, like, like if we get Wiseman, let's say he is a double double average. Mm-hmm. It's still fifteen and ten. It's not twenty five. Maybe I, I want Hunter with a top ten pick. I want someone top three pick. I want someone that's going to go get me twenty five points. I don't want. You're looking for a cornerstone. I don't You're wanna, not looking for a complimentary I, I drag piece. Darko Milicic's here, or I know what you mean. I, I want someone that's going to get 25, and I can worry about the look, Hunter. Look usually the, when look you're the Celtics, usually team. when you're picking in the top three, you're kind of looking for a new face of the franchise. Celtics got three guards that can get 20, and then they'll figure out the rest. And oh, that's exactly. including Kimba. So if they don't have even Kimba in there, they still got three with with Hayward healthy. So got three wings mm-hmm. that can score, and then you can figure out the rest. And I, in today's basketball, and Marcus Smart comes off the bench, yeah. drops 20 if he wants. I would love to have a center that could like if it, if Joe Allen beat or any if any center hunter mm-hmm. would put the work in to be good in the block, mm-hmm. the it would the just one guy like let's and especially let's say this if Shaq came in the league day everybody's like Shaq couldn't play today I'm like no he would change the league because nobody could guard him. That's like, the same problem that people are having with Giannis. Right, teams used they don't to, like his game, but you can't stop him. Teams used to. When Shaq was in the league, Hunter, you would have three seven footers. That's mm-hmm. that's that's eighteen, 18 fouls. Him. Yeah, you got eighteen fouls. And today, if Shaq walked in the league right now, teams wouldn't be equipped to. And do And this that, is young Shaq to even do that. Right? Like we're talking Orlando Shaq. Right. So teams couldn't even if he came in the league today. I mean, just if if Embiid had that dog in him, mm-hmm. 
And, and he's foreign, right? It, Embiid is from I can't remember. I want to say Cameroon, but I'm not. I'm not 100. percent But he is from Africa. There's yes. just something about the folks not from America that don't have aren't as aggressive mm-hmm. as the Americans are. And so, like, I don't know. Giannis is pretty aggressive. If, if Embiid will get mean and take it, what I'm saying is that the teams aren't equipped to defend that right now. Because they oh, don't they, have no, they don't have big men down they low. Don't, they don't. Have that could <laughs> listen. You get one guy that's a little bit angry down in the paint. You right. could shift the paradigm. That's why. That's why the Bucks could make the finals right now with Giannis literally carrying them on their that's back up, and a little yeah. bit of help of Middleton. Like who? Who are they going to put down low to really mess with him? Nobody. I mean, the only one that's going to give him a little bit of trouble is in the series he's getting ready to play right now against Miami. But that's because Bam. Is super athletic, yeah. out of bio. He's super athletic and can kind of keep with him. But I still don't think I don't think Giannis gets less than twenty or, or twenty five. So now let me pose this to you. Obviously, since you're the Hornets fan here, and you brought up Joe and looks like the Seventy Sixers would not be opposed to just breaking this up. Mm-hmm. They already fired Brett Brown, and I, you know, it might not quite be working out from a situational standpoint for what they have. What did we say was the craziest thing that they did? They traded away J.J. Redick and some other shooters, and they went out and got Al Horford and just clogged the paint up. Would you put Terry Rozier on the block to try and go out and get Joel Embiid? I'd trade Terry Rozier for anything. Okay. <laughs> and the only reason, the only reason I'm putting Terry Rozier out there, people he's a bench that are, player. That, 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 like, well, I mean, he could still get you. Last year, you think he averaged like 19. I, so. I understand their rotation, and he had to do that. Mm-hmm. But under no circumstances do you want that. Well, I'm just saying, I think that would fit both parties. Because like you said, you if you could get Embiid, then you would go for it. You would have to throw something else in there for the contracts to, oh, to figure out. They can have everybody they want. Okay. Because I'm just you saying, can, there's not because I'm just saying, if I'm the 76ers <laughs> and I look and see how horrible we did against Boston, right. because we had nobody out there that could at least score 17 or 18 that wasn't named Joel Embiid, I would want a three point shooter. Mm-hmm. And ter- look, Scary Terry, he's not afraid. He's not scared to pull up from anywhere. He would be a good if you got Ben Simmons on your team and you're not. See, what position are you playing, Ben? You'd have, he'd be point forward. So if he's if he's running the basketball, you need a, a point. The only reason to have a point guard on the team is to guard the other guy's quick point guard and to be able to shoot Terry three, and be able to shoot three. Terry. So I think that would be a good fit. As far as the Hornets are concerned, Hunter, the, let's. I've given you the the draft history. I know they fuck up every pick. True. Now, with that said, if Embiid was in this draft, where would he be going? One. Probably. So whatever's on my roster. I mean, roster, what did he go? Three or four when he did come out of whatever, Kansas? Whatever's on my roster <laughs> in Charlotte. He's already better. He's better than. And he's better than whatever magical pick I think I can make at three because, you know, history shows history shows two things. One, two, it's only a 50-50 chance to hit somebody. Unless you're the Charlotte Hornets, then you got a, like a half a <laughs> percent of a chance. One yeah. percent chance to hit it, hit the draft pick. Uh, yeah, so they don't. Not, not all of them pan out. The only one that would have, the, the only one that would have panned out was Kobe. But he said, "Get me the hell out of here before he even landed." And, and I don't even think that was a Charlotte thing. No, I think he just wanted to play in L.A. Right. I think that is one hundred percent what it was. I think he wanted to just play in L.A. Um, I'm serious. Like I'm sitting there thinking, the the top two players that would be on the team if Joel was traded. You know, if you guys traded Terry for Joel and whoever else you get from him, it would be Joel, big old gap, then Devontae Graham. I would take, I would offer the Sixers the second pick and everybody on the roster but Graham. I like Devontae Graham. <laughs> I think Devontae Graham's got too. a lot in it. Fun fact, well, you probably are. No, I don't know if you do or not. Devontae Graham played at Kansas, too. I. It's not like he's... Uh, just because he was picked in the second round from Kansas, he averaged what? 19 Do you want to know why he was year? picked so late? Why is that? It's because he was a four year starter, or he was there for four years at Kansas. For some reason, these NBA guys, if you're not a one and done or foreign, yeah. they don't want to touch you. So it went uh, Wiggins, Jabari Parker, and then Joel Embiid. God, Jabari Parker, didn't he pan out? I wouldn't have picked him just looking at him. He just he, he looks like, like a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. He looks like he's he looks fat. like a hot dog. He's shaped like a pear. Joe Allen beats a few hot dogs away from a bad weekend. Aaron Gordon is was fourth. 
Exum fifth, Marcus Smart sixth, Julius Randle seventh. Hornets, that's the Von Lay pick when they and then they God. Packed, packed it passed by basically see one problem with the Hornets over the years in, in, in a lot of this hunter looking at their picks, it, and don't take this the wrong way, was was Kimba Walker was on the team. You had to find somebody to fit his play style. And what well that but you also couldn't just pick another point guard even if no. he was the best player available. No, you wanted no, yeah, you, <laughs> you, could, you couldn't. You couldn't. Most, you couldn't it looked pick. like a lot of their picks, because a lot of them were big men, they were hoping to get a pick-and-roll guy. Right. They were they were trying to find people that could, that could fit in that well. That could complement Kimba. With Kimba. Yeah. You know, they kept picking big men. Cody Zeller could turn into the next Dirk. Noah Vonley could be Chris Bosh. Could. Could. Michael kidd Grilchrist, the two-pick. He could be the next Gerald Wallace. Could. But, again, I don't want to pick people that can't shoot. Like you, we're 19 years old. You're making it to the NBA. Mm-hmm. How can you not shoot? Right. Like, that, that's just insane to me. And, and, and that's the only sport really that once you get to the as a rookie in the NFL, I would say you can do your position, your job to about a 95. percent You just don't know certain stuff. But you're like, learning NFL terminology at, and you're getting your man body. At 22, you know how to play safety. Yeah. Or you know how to play defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Or you know how to play linebacker. For at the, 18. For the most part, for the most part. Right. If you're 18 years old and can't shoot a basketball, I you're still getting drafted if you're 6'6", six, 6'7", six, mm-hmm. six, six, you're, right. you're right. No, that's exactly right. Why, why do you think Lonzo got drafted as oh, high as he yeah. did? It wasn't because he could shoot. It was because of the magic word, what he could be. The magic word was could. What did they say? He could be Jason Kidd. Hornets got to stop drafting on could, could. Be J- could be Jason Kidd. What is he now? Stop drafting Project. Could, draft wheel. And All right, so... What I kind of want to lean into that, Hunter, real quick. Mm-hmm. Do you think Edwards is a lock at one with Minnesota if they hold it? 